Okay, so now we have a presentation by uh, 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 Lennon the Black the Third on ethics, global climate change, and disasters. Thank you, Lynn. All right, thank you, Joe. All right, we're going to go right through this. Ethics, global climate change, and disasters, a historical overview and recommendation. Okay. In boilerplate. Okay, introduction. The Earth climate is rapidly changing for the worse. Sea levels have been rising around the world in many places, some, and in some places very quickly. Global temperatures are climbing with unusual weather events occurring. Glaciers, polar ice caps, icebergs, and snow fields are quickly melting. Okay. Here's a slide of the lower Manhattan, part of lower Manhattan, uh, what they expect to happen in about 85 years as the sea levels rise up. Okay, there are a number of outsider contributing factors. Uh, one are greenhouse gases. Second is volcanic activity that puts a lot of uh, particles in the air. Uh, there are aerosol pollutants in the air or atmosphere. Uh, there's a natural climate variability and solar radiation levels. Will, all of these will have an impact on climate change. Uh, there's a geographic, geographic or geographical theory about how populations move was started by or cited by Professor E.S. Lee in 1966 on migration. It's called push-pull. People are either pushed out of an area for some reason, war, climate, whatever, disasters, or people are pulled to another area for economic reasons. Uh, virtually all of my ancestors were pulled to another region from France to Canada or around eastern Canada, and then finally by the United States. Uh, all of them were seeking better economic opportunities. But with rising sea levels, this will be a push factor. Uh, this is a South Pacific island. I think it's actually Fiji. Uh, it's showing unusually high tides coupled with rising sea levels, uh, where before Oh, uh, there was a beach, now there's water. This slide shows the incremental part of southeastern United States. As sea level rise, uh, the color shift from dark red to orange to yellow to white as more and more land is covered by ocean water. So there are significant problems because the east part East southeastern part of the United States is very low. Uh, this is a melting glacier in the Antarctic. Uh, mankind has had this, the same problems before. Actually, in Turkey, uh, there was a very interesting incident about 5600 BC. There was a barrier or a sill in, that blocked the Mediterranean from the CMMR, and this collapsed. So the dwellers around the Black Sea had to retreat fairly quickly. Uh, the Black Sea rose about 15 centimeters a day. Um, and under, uh, recently or several decades ago, underwater archaeologists went down and found the original shoreline. At that time, the Black Sea was 30 to 80 meters lower than the Mediterranean. Um, another example is the Yellow River in China, which has broken its banks many times through the millennium, and people have had to escape each time or move. Uh, the whole part of the Netherlands uh, has been flooded through the millennium, or several millennia, uh, and so the Dutch have had to build these huge dikes to protect themselves and protect the land. 
actually most of the Netherlands is below sea level. Uh, the Dutch have an old saying, uh, God made the world, but the Dutch made uh, the Netherlands or Holland. And then the Amazon River annually floods the whole Amazon basin. So people either they have to build houses that are above the flood stage or they retreat to boats. Some ethical points to consider. Uh, is it ethically better to let people sort themselves out with this looming disaster of sea level rise? Is it better to do nothing? Is it ethically better to try and help people with this disaster? Uh, if we decide to do that, there's only two options. You can either protect people in place or move them elsewhere. Um, this is some glacier ice that is melted from a retreating glacier. It's in a bay that was formed. Before this was nothing but glacier. But as the bay is, as the glacier is retreated, the ice melts and has formed a, 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 a water or a bay. Uh, a number of countries are going to be hit hard. Uh, Bangladesh, Hong Kong, UAE, the parts of the UK, parts of the US. Indonesia, the Philippines, and India. All of them are going to be greatly affected, or parts will be greatly affected um, by rising sea levels. Some of the major cities that are very low lying Miami, London, Hong Kong, uh, Singapore, Dhaka, Bangkok, Jakarta, and Venice. Bangkok is having a double whammy because of groundwater pumping, the city is subsiding, it's sinking, and then the Gulf of Thailand is rising. They expect by the year 2030, in about 15 years, major parts of Bangkok will be underwater. Uh, the groundwater pumping, uh, they lose, I don't, I don't even remember, maybe 15 centimeters uh, every year, but this has been going on for decades. Places like Venice are already having severe flooding. Some of the major island nation states, uh, Nauru, the Seychelles, uh, the Bahamas, the Solomons, Kiribati, uh, Tuvalu, the Marshalls, and the Mal Mal Maldives. Uh, people are already moving off of all these islands uh, that are at very low level and then moving to other islands or to higher ground. So this is already happening. Uh, as I mentioned, Venice along the Grand Canal has already seen some very significant flooding, especially at high tide. Uh, it's a before and after picture of a melting glacier. Uh, this might have been taken uh, uh, 70 or 80 years ago. So you can see the dramatic com composition of before and after to show you what used to be a glacier and now is green grass. The greenhouse gases that are concerned with increasing the temperatures are methane, carbon dioxide, ozone, and hydrogen sulfide. Uh, actually, uh, there have been different population movements, forced and unforced. Some of the forced population movements are the India-Pakistan participation or par partition after World War II. Uh, the ancient Israelites were uh, forced to move to Babylon under Cyrus, and then they were released to go back home. Uh, the French Canadians had an ethnic, ethnic cleansing in 1755. Actually, my direct ancestor, Joseph, he was one of 10 children at the time, or actually 10 adults. And then he was the only one that we think who escaped, he ran into the woods. And then all of his brothers and sisters were deported to the United States, England, France, uh, or the Caribbean right at the start of the French and Indian War. Uh, the Palestinians have all been forced, relocated, and the African tribes living in South Africa were uh, forced to move by the Zulus during a very uh, destructive war. Uh, another picture of a melting glacier in Iceland or actually they're parts of a glacier that is, that is retreating. Uh, Northern Lights, again, over the same glacier. 
uh, other forced population movements, the Cossacks in Russia, from their uh, traditional area after World War I. Um, pretty much every German in Czechoslovakia, Poland, Hungary, and other places, Russia, were forced to move back to Germany at the end of World War II. Uh, ethnic Albanians from Kosovo, uh, many Christians from Iraq and Syria are being forced out, and the Japanese from China, where they had been settlers from the early 1930s after 1945, they were all pushed out or expelled. There actually has been some organized population movements. Uh, the Three Gorges Dam Project is probably the best example of an organized movement. Uh, the Bikini Islanders, where the Americans had atomic and hydrogen bomb testing after World War II. Uh, but the Bikini Islanders want to go back but they haven't been allowed because of the radiation. Uh, the Chagres Islanders off of Diego Garcia, which is in the middle of the Indian Ocean. Uh, the U.S. convinced the British, who own the islands, to move the, the islanders off because the Americans wanted to build a base and a runway at the start of the Vietnam War to support their operations. But the Chagres Islanders haven't been allowed that either. And then the French and Canadian, the French Canadian ethnic cleansing actually was organized, but when the people and their families were all put on these ships, but it was not organized when they wound up because the British didn't tell the people who were receiving these refugees that the refugees were coming. Uh, another part of a melting glacier is the uh, same glacier what used to be. This is uh, Switzerland, uh, a glacier again from about 60 years ago. The glacier has melted or retreated back as the, uh, as the uh, climate is warm. Uh, options. Uh, we can protect people in place. Option one. We can build seawalls, berms, barriers or dikes around where people are living. We can create artificial offshore islands. Uh, we can create offshore platforms or structures. Uh, another option is to elevate, actually elevate the ground or add dirt, soil, and rocks and build on top of that. Uh, we can build offshore platforms or onshore platforms uh, above where the water is coming in and build on that. Uh, we can anchor ships or floating barges or build extensions of land to seaward. So we can just put rocks, dirt, earth out into the ocean, uh, hopefully secure it, and then build on that. <clears throat> this is a northern Canadian glacier that's uh, retreating. This was, uh, this was, uh, glacier was uh, quite, a, quite, had some quite depth to it. Now it's, uh, now it's melting away. Uh, option two, move people. Uh, the options are we can move them close by, or maybe an island in an island chain. We can move them to an area that's similar in, similar in, this, in climate. Uh, another, I think a good option is moving the countries with falling population, like Japan or Western Europe, uh, the United States and Canada. Uh, some countries have large uninhabited areas. If they have water, uh, that would include Australia, Again, Russia, Canada, the United States all has wide expanses of areas where really no one lives. Uh, countries with many uninhabited islands, uh, Indonesia and Philippines are probably the best. And then the cities that have a falling or stable populations, there are cities in the United States and Japan where the population is, is either quickly or uh, slowly falling, but it is falling. Even some very large areas, cities like Detroit, uh, most of the city has tens of thousands of uh, empty houses. Japan alone has eight million empty houses as they lose hundreds of thousands of people uh, every year to death and they're not being replaced by the birth rate. Uh, Northern Canada glaciers are melting. Also, this was at one time completely covered with snow or glaciers, now uh, the, the snow is melting. Uh, 
artificial glaciers, or I'm sorry, uh, Switzerland glacier uh, before and after, where the, uh, the snows were treated up higher. There are some artificial or man-made islands that have already been created. Uh, Treasure Island in San Francisco Bay between Oakland and San Francisco is one. Uh, Kansai International Airport off of Osaka is a second. There's an artificial recreational park made of landfill off of Singapore. And the world and the palm tree are upscale artificial islands with very expensive houses off of Dubai. And they're going to add more islands and more housings to them, or more houses to them. Uh, there have already been, through the centuries, land, land, rec land reclamation projects by cities. Uh, the shorelines of Boston, San Francisco, New York, Tokyo, St. Petersburg, all of them are substantially different as, as the people that lived there went and built structures or put, it, put in soil or driven piles into, the, uh, piles into the water and then built off of that. Um, they just had several uh, ships dug out over the years uh, in San Francisco, in New York, and Boston, where they essentially sank the ships and then put, covered them up with dirt in an effort to rebuild the area. So the archaeologists are having a lot of fun. Uh, another melting glacier. Another melting glacier, another, Swiss, another part of the Swiss Alps, a before and after picture, where you can see the, uh, not too many years, but there's definitely a change. Uh, who's going to get more, who will be moved first? Uh, some people are, will move themselves. In fact, some people already in Florida are moving, and people are, and they're saying very, loudly that I'm moving because of rising sea levels along the Florida coast. Um, probably affluent or rich people and retirees will wind up moving themselves too. Uh, highly skilled professionals, skilled or semi-skilled workers, unskilled workers, people who need assistance, and anybody else. This is just a recommendation uh, if you wanted a rank order of people to be moved. But again, this brings up ethical questions. Perhaps we should move the people who are able to move first. But that can be worked out. Uh, tourists sightseeing big chunks of uh, glacier ice where the glacier used to be. Again, uh, moving people to countries with declining populations, Japan, France, Germany. Countries with a lot of used lands uninhabited islands, countries that uh, uh, that have a lot of extra islands that no one lives there. And again, cities with a lot of empty houses. Not are having fun, or the sea otters are having fun, where there used to be a glacier. A South American glacier that's completely disappeared in the Andes uh, through the decades. Okay, in conclusion, uh, even if carbon dioxide and other gases were contained today, sea levels would keep rising for decades. Uh, there's only two options, either keep people where they are and protect them, or move them elsewhere. Uh, planning is the most important thing right now to prepare for the above options, and delaying those plans will only make life much more difficult. And then the rest of the slides are just uh, before and after pictures. Uh, it's a volcano, extinct volcano in Alaska. This is another melting glacier in uh, before and after, also in Alaska. Melting sea ice in the Antarctica. <coughs> no, another melting glacier that's disappeared over the last 75 years or so. It's a melting uh, glacier in, in Greenland where uh, these little streams or lakes form on top of the, the glacier where uh, the sunlight is hitting it and it's melting down. So the melting glacier in the Antarctic. Uh, what they expect North America to look like here in 
maybe 30 or 40 years for most of Florida and Louisiana. Most of the southeastern part of the United States has pretty much disappeared along with uh, some major flooding along the north, on the eastern corridor of the United States. And more than a few islands in the Caribbean are also going to be history. Uh, this is a good example of high tide in Venice. This is St. Mark's Square, uh, where the water's already waist deep when high tides come through. It's what England will look like here, maybe in another 50 years, where major parts of southeastern England will be underwater, also parts of Ireland. Okay, that's it. Okay. Thank you, Len. Any questions, comments? Yeah, thank, you. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Okay, our globe is warming and we need to take some precautions for it. But you did not mention one precaution. It's uh, trying to stop somehow, trying to stop the process, the global warming. Uh, for example, countries. Some countries. Well, as I mentioned, Actually, even if global warming stopped right this second, the glaciers are still going to melt. There's so much heat in the atmosphere that it's going to take decades or centuries to resolve it. Even if everybody went green, as it were, the effects are still, still going to happen. I think the only way that it might be done if you physically pull carbon out of the air and store it someplace. Um, I'm not sure how, I'm sure it can be done, but, but at an enormous cost. Pass the line to the reversible side? I think eventually it can be reversible, but again, there's, there, there's other factors involved. Not only is, is uh, the, the Earth's climate changes period, uh, through different... Uh, uh, the Earth's climate changes because of the uh, tilting of the Earth, which changes, and also how much sunlight the Earth receives. And there are these very long periods of, of how the Earth's axis uh, rotates around a certain point that allows more sunlight or less sunlight to happen. Right now, we're coming out of a, really we're coming out of the, uh, the latest ice age from 10,000 years ago. Um, and scientists predict that eventually the next ice age will start up. But they think the global warming is interrupting that, or will interrupt it. So. One of the things that I've looked at is that there's a lot of information, but scientists don't agree on what it means. Also, there are reporting stations for um, to measure sea level rise, but they're concentrated in places like Japan, Western Europe, and the United States. Most of the world doesn't have reporting levels on reporting stations for sea level rise. Um, in the, uh, in the uh, islands off of New Guinea, actually islands are sinking because the land is sinking, so the islanders are moving off in addition to sea level rise. In fact, all of the northern part of North America, because it had uh, three, three kilometers of glacier ice on it, that depressed the whole continent. Now that the ice has melted, it's slowly rising a few um, millimeters every year. But it's like a teeter-totter when the main part of North America was depressed, certain areas outside of where the glaciers were, like in Baltimore, Maryland, in the Chesapeake Bay, they rose up. Now this is reversing so the Chesapeake Bay is sinking. All the islands are, are, uh, are sinking because the land is sinking. 
in addition to sea level rise. So there's a there's some disagreement between scientists on exactly the interpretation. There's a general agreement that sea levels are rising, but sea levels are rising <coughs> faster in some places. Sea levels are rising. Sea levels are rising slowly in some places. In some places, sea levels are falling. They don't know why. They have no explanation for that. <coughs> so it's uh, um, it would probably be the biggest engineering project in the history of, of humanity to stop global warming. It it's would, it, not only geographical engineering, but also a social engineering. Because it's social engineering, yes. If you move people, that it seems that it will cause many social problems. Well, very much so. And we need to uh, consider these two. Perfect example, Japan. Japan is a very insular, not xenophobic, but they're very tightly knit um, people, and they don't readily accept <coughs> foreigners into the society. I mean, they're friendly, you can go there, but to integrate into Japanese society is extremely difficult. Germany is not quite as bad, but the Germans <coughs> are very, I forget what we would say, uh, cliquish or clannish. Germans prefer to stay with other Germans. So, <coughs> though, because the German population is falling almost as fast as the Japanese population, <coughs> the Germans have had to uh, welcome outsiders in, <coughs> primarily refugees. <coughs> Oh, Any other comments? Losing my voice. It's a question, a uh, general question about this master's. Uh, do you think that we could uh, could be helpful with this master? Did you have a plan also in your university to, to participate in, in some reality? I think. In the ideas, you have done a very good work, and <coughs> an overview, uh, yes, uh, very important and critical uh, uh, aspect. Because, as you say, scientists now, uh, there's too much information, we don't know anything. Everybody's talking about this climate change, but well. I think. Yeah, this is, uh, by the way, this is just this uh, interesting paper, not, his, my, not a thesis presentation. Yeah, my thesis with Daryl was on, was on something else. <coughs> well, the, uh, there's a lot of talk about rising sea levels and much more where the sea levels are starting to encroach or cover land on the Marshall Islands, Miami, Florida. So, so people are saying, we have to, we're doing something now, or we need to prepare. But that's the only people that are talking about doing something. They're talking about what's happening, but no one, virtually no one is talking about what to do about it. So this is just my proposals of a concrete action plan, some options to how to, because rising sea levels aren't going down. Well, now, what are you going to do about it? Either you have to protect people where they are, or you have to move them. There's no, there's no other way. Kyoto Protocol'ünü bildiğim kadarıyla çoğu ülke imzalamamış. Yani Çin mesela, Amerika. Yani neden imzalamıyorlar? Yani imzalamalarını teşvik etmek için ne yapabilir bilmiyorum da. Some developed countries, such as uh, China, uh, USA, didn't sign uh, theater protocols. Why? Turkey signed. Yes. <laughs> well done, Turkey. But the Kyoto Protocol is now replaced by the Paris, the Paris Declaration, mm -hmm. which is a. <coughs> Everyone signed. No, Kyoto. Uh, no, the Paris, the Paris, Paris Declaration, Declaration is now. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
And another question. It is not. Uh, it is a question, but I have. I want to ask you. Some people claim that uh, this climate, uh, global climate change, is a lie. Uh, some some kind of scientist uh, suggest or uh, proposal this uh, argument, but it is not true. Why some people or some scientists claim that? What is the or have you read uh, any paper about the, this okay. side paper? Yes, I've read. Paper of other side. Yes, I've read some science papers that say this, these are natural changes. Mm -hmm. And even if all of this is incorrect, the natural changes <clears throat> are still causing sea levels to rise mm -hmm. just from sheer anecdotal evidence, just from uh, uh, even in Bangkok along the Chapia River where it enters into the Gulf of Thailand, the sea levels are actually quickly rising there as the land sinks as well. So the farmers and fishermen are already building their own dikes against the riverbank to protect themselves. They're not waiting for the government. Um, the, the, the before and after pictures of where a big glacier was 70 years ago and now there's nothing but grass is usually pretty good indication that something is happening. Unless somebody doctored all the photos, um, there, there's enough non-scientific observations to say something is happening. Um, what are called drunken trees in Siberia and Alaska, where trees were upright in the permafrost, now they're tilting over because the land is warming up. The soil has become uh, it's not icy anymore, it's actually the soil has become soft, so the tree roots are just, are not supporting the tree, so the trees are all at crazy angles. I thank you for your presentation, of course. Um, as a conclusion, after this presentation, I understand that the world is going um, and speedily in a, uh, to the end. So. Uh, in the light of ethical discussion, or in the, article, uh, in the light of ethical perspective, uh, what are we trying to do? To prolong the end of the world, or uh, going the end of the world, or uh, stop going the end of, uh, end of the world? Well, precautions. What kind of precautions is important in our effort? Well, people are already taking action now people are already moving themselves. It's just a question of whether some organization will form or organizations will form a super committee to deal with the problem. Uh, I don't think that'll happen, but then there are certain UN organizations like the UNHCR and the International Panel on Climate Change uh, could be good leads or good members of, of that committee that would form the International Organization on Migration would be another good member to have. Um, I, I don't think any action is going to get taken unless, there, unless there's an extremist situation that, that, uh, that there's a great danger or peril and then people will start to act, or at least the government will start to act. But right now, no one is even thinking about that, or almost no one is thinking about that. No one in the government, anyway. Locally, yes, but national governments, no, not at all. It, everything is just talk. The Paris Accords, just talk. It's just paper, paper moving around from desk to desk. But as we've seen in the Black Sea, mankind has overcome disasters before. So people just had to relocate themselves from the rising waters and retreat and rebuild their lives. So, so we're going to do it again. We're going to do it again. <laughs>